Hi, welcome back to Insightly Opinions. If you're new, my name's Tamara, and today I would like to share my advice to the friends, family members, co-workers, or people who have to support or be around people who are experiencing vision loss or have recently gone blind. I know for most sighted people, it can be really difficult to know where to start. It can be difficult to know how to support people. It can be difficult to know what the right response is or how to even process your own feelings. So we're gonna deal with all of that today. I'm gonna to break it down into some really simple point forms. So if you encounter blind people, if you ever have to go through this, you have a resource with some easy to follow tips and tricks to make your life easier and to help support the person who is going through vision loss. If you enjoy content like this, please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. I want to grow this channel and reach as many people as possible and really challenge those stigmas of disability and blindness. So if you wanna help me on that journey, hitting that notification bell and leaving me comments, they all help me out. But without further ado, let's dive in. The first thing I'd like to talk about is you need to give yourself the space to grieve. While the person who is losing their vision or who is going blind or who has gone blind is experiencing their own form of grief and trauma, if you are in close contact with that person, seeing their pain, seeing what they're going through, trying to be that pillar of support all of the time can be really draining. So make sure you give yourself time, not only to grieve their vision loss, but to support and take care of yourself. Because if you are their support and you're burned out, you're not only not helping the person who's blind, but you're not helping yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, it's really going to put a strain on relationships and it's gonna be difficult for both of you. Whether that's going away for a weekend, getting professional help, talking to a psychologist or psychiatrist to help process your feelings, reaching out to another friend to talk about those issues that are going on, or even reaching out to the many support groups for people who are parents of children who are blind or low vision, or support groups of spouses or friends of people who are dealing with vision loss. There's many groups on Facebook. You can find them with a really quick search. I will try and link a couple of them in the description down below. Number two, you do not need to have all of the answers every single time. What I think is more important is when someone is dealing with a frustration or grief or trauma, you need to have a sympathetic ear. You don't need to say, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, learn this skill, do that. Most of the time that isn't helpful. When I need to talk or vent about something, all I'm looking for is for someone to have a kind ear for somebody to listen to what I'm saying and acknowledge that my pain is real. I can get frustrated easily, I can be sad, and those are all very normal responses when dealing with the frustrations of vision loss and disability. What's more helpful is when you, as a person, can say, I hear you, I don't know what you're going through, but that sounds tough, I'm here if you need anything, would you like some support to look for resources? How can I best support you? Those are all really great things to ask somebody because it doesn't take the power away from the person who has gone blind. It puts the ball in their court so they can ask for what they need in that moment. Number three, let's talk about where you can reach out for help. We've already talked about the usual professional routes, talking to psychologists and psychiatrists, but most countries or even states or cities will have some form of blind rehabilitation services or blind organizations who help to support those in the community who have blindness or vision loss. All you need to do is go to Google and do a quick search of blindness or blindness rehabilitation or disability rehabilitation center and look for what's available in your area. If you're in Canada, I would reach out to the CNIB first and they can tell you about the other resources that are available specific to either A, your type of vision loss, or other rehabilitation services that are available through a variety of different organizations in your area. If you have something that's a little less specific to what's going on with the person who's blind or visually impaired, or you're having a struggle, again, reaching out to those Facebook groups or other groups of individuals who have similar experiences can not only help you, but also the person who's blind connect with someone who has a similar experience and share those frustrations. Remember that this is a journey. 
You're not trying to get to a destination. Take it one step at a time, one task at a time, one tool at a time, and that's all you need to do and eventually the person will have all of the tools in their toolbox to be able to live independently and be able to do things on their own. I know people have different ability levels and different comfort levels and so you need to work within what they are capable of doing. When you're trying to help somebody look for something to do, you need to make sure you're not neglecting the things that bring them joy. You can start by looking at what brought them joy before their vision loss. Were they a musician? Did they love to paint? Did they enjoy walking or running? Did they enjoy podcasting or ham radio? Whatever it may be, there are usually ways to adapt whatever hobbies or fun activities that they did while they were sighted and be able to do them still while they are blind. The next thing I cannot emphasize enough Organize, 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 and keep things off the floors. I know this can be difficult, but 15 minutes a day can make all the difference. When my space is consistent, I don't get lost. When I don't have things on the floor, I don't trip over things. When there are consistent walkways and consistent homes for items, I don't lose things. And there can be a variety of different tools that you can use to help get that in place. I'm going to have another video coming out very shortly here, probably in the next week or two, talking about how I organize my space because it's not only great for people who are blind or low vision, but people who are sighted too. You will never again lose your keys. You'll have homes for everything. And that way it stays consistent and the person who's blind not only can stay organized, but can find things independently. Just a side note. If you leave glasses or breakables on a counter, if a person who is blind is coming along and they're looking for something, it's very easy to knock something over or spill something or drop it on the floor and break it. That exact thing happened to me last night. I cut my hand open pretty badly because a glass fell out of the cupboard and I tried to catch it and instead I sliced my hand open. And things will happen, but the more consistent you can be, the more you put things away immediately, the more you have consistent homes for things, the better it's going to be. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is encouraging independence. All too often I see people trying to help and it's the people who try to help too much that really end up stifling independent living skills or the blind person learning to do something on their own. I would encourage you, even though it's sometimes frustrating, even though sometimes it'll take longer, let the person who is blind or low vision do it for themselves. Figure out how to do it. Encourage them to do it themselves. Because if you do everything, they're never gonna learn how to do it. They're never gonna be independent and you will always need to be there. It's impossible for you to always be there. So at every stage, try to learn things, assist as needed, but try to encourage independence. For example, it's okay if I pull out a top and I can't remember what color it is, if I go over to my boyfriend and say, what color is this? Sure, I could absolutely do it on my own using an app, using different accessible tools, but it's usually faster and easier for me to do that. That's not a big deal. If I had somebody cooking for me, cleaning for me, picking out all my clothes, taking me to appointments, that might be a sign that you're doing too much. One of those things might be okay, especially if the person may not have the ability to do those things. But again, I would always encourage trying to learn those skills and learning what those limitations are rather than stifling the person and preventing them from trying something themselves. I cannot stress enough how important autonomy and independence are as an individual in order to maintain not only your mental health, but your sense of self and maintain your confidence in your abilities. If nothing else but to give you something to do, you need to try and encourage someone to try new things. You need to encourage them to do it themselves. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy content like this, please don't forget to subscribe, 
hit those bells and buttons, leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a different perspective or you have questions, I'm always happy to answer them. I can always do another video in more detail. If you have anything specific that you'd like me to address, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in between uploads, I have an accessible Twitch stream Sunday night, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. I also have some bonus streams on Tuesday nights. We play lots of different types of games. Most of them are not blind accessible and we talk about accessibility, so it can be pretty fun. It's sometimes frustrating, but I find it very rewarding. So if you want to come join us there, we always have a great hangout. We have lots of conversation going. You can chat with us one-on-one. -on -one. And I have my other social media accounts linked in the description down below. But that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.